What's up, Illumineers? Welcome to the first ever deck of the week here on Inkspot Games. And kind of the point of this weekly series is instead of doing just kind of these random gameplay videos, um, I do want to kind of take more of a deeper look into the decks themselves. I've actually been getting some requests for that, so I figured let's make it a weekly thing. We'll do deck of the week. We'll focus on um, a deck it could be a competitive deck, could be kind of a janky deck, could be just a fun deck, um, and really kind of dig into the strategy and what you want to do gameplay wise. Um, and maybe you're interested in picking the deck up. Um, and then we're also going to show some gameplay as well here on Pixelborn. So we're going to start deck of the week, the very first one, um, with the deck I'm actually playing right now for physical paper play and that is Emerald Amethyst. Now, if you've been kind of following me on social media, all that, which by the way, make sure you follow me on all my social medias, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. You know, I'm a big Emerald fan and I think this works really well with Amethyst and the kind of the game plan is very simple. Your Amethyst cards, um, kind of the point is to, <clears throat> you have some good one drops in here um, with Olaf and Pascal, which gives you an evasive. Um, some decent removal with, with Rafiki, but it adds one thing that Emerald doesn't have, at least in the first chapter. Rise of Floodborne, we'll see. Uh, looks like, based on spoilers, there will be some more draw power. But for right now, a um, Amethyst gives you a decent amount of draw power, friends on the other side, and Maleficent. So we don't have a ton of Amethyst cards here, but that's kind of the point of this engine. While with Emerald, it kind of has your typical Emerald cards that you would see in most Emerald decks. Um, there's a couple little techie cards in here that you'll run into for certain situations, but like, the whole point of the deck is to be able to draw cards to maintain advantage on your opponent while building up to be able to play your higher cost characters that leave more of an impact on the game. Um, Emerald is very kind of mid-rangey, um, but it can build up and you can uh, quest for a lot of lore at once if you're able to build that board, um, but it has some good low-cost characters too, and not just high-cost characters. So we're kind of we're going to go through the card by card here, and I'll kind of discuss why the card is in here, why I think it's good for the deck, and what I want it to accomplish. So let's actually start at the bottom here with Amethyst to get it out of the way. We have one Befuddle. Um, it's a piece of removal that like, if you get it turn one, cool. If you don't, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Like it can deal with like a Lilo while Simba is a bodyguard and stuff like that. So one of these I think is just fine. Um, if you find it in the late game where it becomes more of a brick, it's inkable so you can just use it as ink. So it's not the worst uh, thing in the world. We have three Olaf, and who is a one drop? And what I like about Olaf is that, sure, he doesn't have a lot of attack, but the three defense is actually, can be really big in the early game, especially if your opponent drops like a two, two character or another one, three character, he doesn't die immediately. So Olaf will have some staying power in the early game. We have four Pascal who's actually kind of a pain especially when you get two of them on the board um this card can actually carry a lot of weight assuming you're not going up against steel like against cards like tinkerbell and grab your sword and stuff like that like he's able to stay on the board for quite a while because of his evasive ability when there's other characters on the board he's kind of the he's the one drop you want to draw in your opening hand for sure and like I said, he can carry a lot of weight, especially if you get multiple Pascals on the board where they kind of both stay evasive no matter what. Um, so those are the Amethyst character. Well, not we have two more Amethyst characters. Actually, we have four Maleficent. It's Maleficent. You draw a card. You can sing friends to the other side with it to draw more cards. Just a very good card overall. And we have two Rafiki. He's not inkable, so I didn't want to put too much of him in there. Yeah, you know, but he's still a good piece of removal with his rush ability. So two Rafiki, and that's it for the Amethyst characters. We also have friends on the other side, 
which is just a draw two that you can play for free on your Maleficent, which is really, really good. So that's it for Amethyst, only 18 Amethyst cards. The kind of meat of this deck is your Emerald that as you see has 42 cards. Um, starting off, we have four Flynn Rider, just a very, very good two drop. On this deck, you're gonna wanna play on the curve. You're gonna wanna have, you're gonna wanna draw a one drop and a Flynn Rider, preferably your Pascal and your Flynn Rider so that your Pascal gets um, evasive. And there are a number of different three drops on here. So you wanna play this deck on the curve going one, two, three with your ink costs. And Flynn Rider is kind of one of the best two drops in the game. Um, especially with his uh, ability when he's challenged, making the player discard a card. He quests for two, just a very, very solid card that is a staple in any Emerald deck. Um, we have two Megara, and what's interesting about Megara as kind of like a tech option, she's more situational because when you play her, um, a chosen character gets plus two attack this turn. So a fun little combo with her is if you have um, Olaf on the board and you play Megara and he becomes a 3-3, um, then he can kind of kill one of your opponent's lower cost characters without him dying. Um, but she can also be useful in the late game if you're trying to, um, if you need that extra plus two to get rid of a larger character on the board. Um, to Megara, again, kind of like niche, not niche, but very situational. So I didn't want to put too much of her in there. We have three Cheshire Cat. Um, he's fine, or sorry, four Cheshire Cat, I should say. He's fine, quest for two. Um, he can be pretty annoying because he bashes a challenging character that, that bashes him. So just a good three drop, again, while you're playing on the curb. But a better three drop is definitely Jasper that we have three of in this deck. It stops your opponent from questing. You don't want to put too much Jasper in there because he only quests for one. So I think three is enough. But when he gets on the board, he can be a pain for your opponent, especially as you're ramping up your board and you're starting to get your more um, higher lower characters on the board and your opponent just can't keep up. So that is three Jasper. Continuing with the characters, we have two Peter Pan, another decent three drop who is an evasive. Um, we have four Hans, who is just a four drop three, three quest for three lore vanilla. Um, it's funny, like he, he is a very targeted guy because he has no like evasive or ward or anything like that. He's just, he dies to almost anything. <clears throat> so your opponent will go after him. I find that like he doesn't stay on the board very long, but that's okay. Cause again, if you're playing on a curve and you're able to get at least three lore from him, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, another good four drop in here is the Tinkerbell, who is evasive, quest for two. Um, you know, if you're dropping your Pascal, your Peter Pan, your Tinkerbell, you have all these evasive characters, it makes it much harder for your opponent to deal with your board. Uh, getting into the big characters here, we have five Cusco, who is not one of the, the best cards, if not the best card in the deck, but maybe. Um, he has ward, which makes him a pain. You can't choose him for anything. For those who have gone against Cusco, you know how this goes. <clears throat> He's big, he quests for three, he can kind of be a pain to get rid of. He has the Cheshire Cat ability um, where you can ba uh, banish a challenging character if he's banished. So getting rid of him can be a pain because your opponent kind of basically has to trade a character uh, for him. And by that time, he might have already quested a couple times. So Cusco is just a really, really good card. Not inkable, but Man, if you're able to build your board up on the curve <clears throat> and you get to Cusco, good chance you can win the game. Another five drop if you don't have Cusco is Mad Hatter. Um, very similar, he is a five cost, but he is inkable. Two, four, quest for three, but his ability is when he, whenever he's challenged, not banished, challenged, you, he, you, you may draw a card, which as you know, drawing cards in Emerald right now isn't that, <clears throat> isn't that prominent so he can be pretty solid i find myself inking him if i draw him early um, because i would much rather play Cusco over him but this is still a good backup plan um we have three genie he's evasive he's a piece of removal he's not inkable but he bounces a card back to the hand 
He's evasive and quest for two. So again, just a really, really good card overall that you want in the late game. Um, we have a two mother Gothel. Um, again, like you don't like use her. She's not like your win condition. Like if you have her on the board and that stops your opponent from questing for a turn or two, because they'll just eventually get rid of her. She's not that hard to get rid of. <coughs> then, yeah, that might bail you out, but it's kind of a just in case backup plan scenario. And challenging Cusco for the best Emerald card in the deck is John Silver. Um, six drop inkable, five, five quest for two. When you play this character and whenever he quests, the chosen opposing character gains reckless, which means they have the challenge of able. And that's if he plays or if, if when he's played or if he quests. So what this deck is trying to do, if you have a bunch of your evasive characters on the board, um, then John Silver <coughs> goes on the thing that they can't attack anyone. So you're kind of stopping your opponent in their tracks there. Let's say you have a um, exerted Cusco or Mad Hatter or whatever, then um, your opponent has to attack one of them and you get their effects. So John Silver is such a pain or if they have to attack him when he quests, he's a 5-5, so chances are he's going to take out that character. Um, John Silver really, really puts a, <laughs> a, a damper on your opponent's um, strategy and can really uh, change the game and win you games. Um, only three because you don't want to see too much of him, but John Silver is just really, really good and I think is a must in this deck. So those are the cards in here. Again, your main goal is to play on the curve. So low cost characters first, one, two, three, four. Keep questing, try your best to control the board. And eventually once you get to these heavy hitters, these higher cost characters, you can take the game from there. So we're gonna jump into the games and see how the deck performs. And yeah, let's just go right into it. All right, here we go. So, all right, we got Pascal for, we got two Pascal. This hand's actually kind of crazy. I'm gonna get rid of the Megaras. I'm actually also gonna get rid of the Cheshire Cat. See, okay, wow, all right. So we're going first. Let's just ink one of the Flynn Riders. Let's play a Pascal. Getting him, this is the one drop you wanna draw. All right, because next turn we can play a Flynn Rider and then he gets evasive. All right, going up against Steel, <clears throat> which can be a challenge against this deck because of cards like Grab Your Sword and Tinkerbell. Let's play Flynn Rider. All right. Quest with Pascal. Okay, Amethyst Steel. Maleficent. You know, I was considering Maleficent, but like, I don't know. I find that she dies too quick. She's not as impactful. Let's ink Megara here. I don't think we really need her right now. Let's play Maleficent. Let's draw a card. Oh my gosh, perfect. Perfect, we'll just quest. And we'll pass. So next turn again, as you see, we're playing on the curve. We have our one drop, our two drop, our three drop. The next turn we'll play our four drop. You know, hopefully we can get a friends on the other side that we can sing with Maleficent here. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. Um, so I think next I think I want to keep this Mother Knows Best next turn. If we, depending on what we draw, we might have to ink this Peter Pan. <clears throat> They'll ink Smash. All right, they have friends on the other side. So they just quested for two. Ah, uh, John Silver. I actually want to keep John Silver. Um, let's just go ahead and play Hans. Let's challenge the Maleficent to get it out of here. And we'll quest. 
And we're looking pretty good right now. Well, now let's see if they have a smash to get rid of the Hans. <clears throat> Hans tends to not stay on the board for too long, I've, I've noticed. If I have to ink the Pascal, so be it. But then again, at the same time, we're not really in a situation where we need John Silver. Because we do have Mother Knows Best that so we can just sing with Maleficent. They'll ink their Hans. Alright, so we have big Tinkerbell coming. I might bounce that Tinkerbell back to hand. Let's go ahead and ink the Pascal. Let's Mother Knows Best the Tinkerbell so they can't shift the big Tinkerbell. We'll just quest, and we're in a pretty good position here. If we get an inkable card next turn, we can play John Silver. <clears throat> Alright, they'll ink Pocket Watch. They're at five. Do they have? Grab your sword. Yep. But that's okay because... <clears throat> we'll just quest with Hans. We have game on board. Looks like they weren't really able to get much going here. Now this deck can lose to grab your sword for sure, especially in the early game. <clears throat> and sometimes it can be difficult to recover, but like as you can see, like they have way more card advantage than we do. There's another grab your sword. So they're gonna hang in there. Ink Aladdin, do they have a play? No, but we do. We'll play Mother Gothel. We'll just pass. All right, Mother Gothel is actually pretty good here. Ink Tinkerbell, they're at seven. Do they have the Ursula? No, they have the Tinkerbell. That's fine. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm fine with just questing. Tinkerbell can't kill Mother Gothel here. <clears throat> Unless they play another Tinkerbell. I mean, Elsa, sure. Um. Let's go ahead. Get rid of the Tinkerbell. Let's just ink that. Play the Cheshire Cat. I imagine they take out the Mother Gothel here. <clears throat> Do they have another Elsa? Maleficent. <clears throat> Alright, that's game. Cool. Alright, nice. So we won our first one. Let's go ahead to game two. Alright, we're going second. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna have to... So 
some major uh uh ugh. all right um this hand ain't great this hand is not great okay there's Flynn Rider let's just pass <clears throat> That's pretty good. Um, I'm just gonna ink befuddle. Play Flynn Rider. They're gonna ink Maleficent. <laughs> Ooh, play a Jafar. Okay. Um. Play Maleficent, let's draw another Cusco. <laughs> Quested for two. All right, they're gonna go after the Flynn Rider here. Makes sense. Ink Stitch. Okay. Um. Ink Cheshire Cat. Let's friends on the other side to draw two. Let's just play Cheshire Cat. Let's pass. <coughs> so I kind of want the plan here to be we ink Hatter to play Cusco. So Maleficent's gone. That's fine. They drew with Queen. <clears throat> this one kind of got off to an awkward start. Oh, well, Rapunzel, they're going to draw three. That's pretty good. They still have the Lantern if they want to use it. Okay. Let's ink Hatter. Let's play Cusco. Um, let's quest for two. We have another Cusco. Ink Maleficent, they're at six. You can play something big here, Ursula. Ho oh, ho boy. <clears throat> oh man. So do they take out the Cheshire Cat? So as weird as it might sound, we might need to mother knows best to Ursula, the Ursula back. I know like they lose, we lose the lore and they draw, but like, they're thinking. <clears throat> A quest. Questing with the queen, interesting. Other Cusco, huh? <sighs> I 
Uh, or do we Jasper? No. <clears throat> Bounce that back. Let's play Rafiki. Let's get rid of the stitch. Let's quest. Alright, they go after the Cusco. <clears throat> so Jafar is gone. Interesting, they go after the Rafiki. Maleficent. Play the Ursula. Mother knows best. Or, uh, Mother Gothel, rather. Mother Gothel. Do we get rid of the Ursula again? I think we do. Like, I know we lose lore, but... Interested to see what they do here. They have plenty of ink. They can get Elsa. Wow. That is an amazing you have forgotten me. <clears throat> That's as good as it gets. See what they do here. All right, the gang rid of the Cheshire Cat. The Queen's gone. Genie is really good. Genie is really good. Let's quest. Now they can't quest. Oh, that you have forgotten me. It's kind of a killer. Eating the stitch. Lantern. Okay, they'll play the Ursula. Kind of figured. Ooh, Hatter is pretty good. Let's just quest. Make him get rid of him. Man, Mother Gothel. Coming in pretty clutch here. 
they have so much ink. We don't have game on board, which is frustrating. Oh. Yeah, it was bound to happen. They're going after Mother Gothel. Um... I'm just gonna play Megara. And just quest. All right, the Gothel's gone, so they can quest. We have game on board. So they, they have to get rid of Mad Hatter, and I don't think they can. They have anything crazy in their hand. Another Elsa. Another Ursula. All right, another Ursula. So now this puts us in an interesting spot. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's crazy. That's insane. That's insane. Because they have very much game on board. Oh, man. They had the last Ursula. They had the last Ursula. Oh, that's so frustrating. Uh, that's a heartbreaker. All right, well, we, we tried our best. Let's go to game three. All right, last game, going second. Oh, that last one was a heartbreaker. Good Lord, all right. Um, No, 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 we'll keep the Olaf just in case. Mm. Eh. We don't have Pascal. Um, let's ink the Tinkerbell, let's play Olaf, let's pass. Emerald. Okay. We got ink of friends. Play a Flynn Rider. Quests pass. Oh, Ink Hatter, they're at three. Fire the cannons. And another Flynn Rider. Okay, so we have to. We have to do this. Ink 
any cons. There are four. Smash. Let's play Maleficent. Let's draw one. I'm actually going to ink this Maleficent to play... That in quest. So we have friends on the other side online for next turn. Grab your sword. Oh man. So a couple interesting little tidbits here. They're running out of cards. Next turn, we can get John Silver out. We got our Cusco out. They haven't drawn great in terms of characters. Jasper, I'm not really that concerned about. Of course, we don't get an inkable card. But we'll still use it. We'll mother knows best the Flynn Rider. And we'll just quest. And hope that we get something inkable next turn. Huh. Thank you. All right, so let's play John Silver. Make Jasper get Rush. We'll quest. We'll pass. I didn't want to do the Hans because right now Jasper is more of a pain. So we get that trade. Good draw. West. Hatter is pretty good. This Olaf is putting in a lot of work. So we're gonna quest and we're gonna make Hans get rush. And we're gonna pass. This is what John Silver does. You can just stop your opponent in their tracks. We'll see what they got off the beast mirror. The ink cat, they're at seven. They gotta have a Tinkerbell, right? Well, no, I was thinking the gray Tinkerbell. So Hans has to challenge. He's gonna challenge the John Silver and he's gonna die. And we're gonna win. Awesome. All right, so there we go. Um, we took the win on that one. So yeah, um, as you can see, this deck is like far from perfect. It's like the third, four, not third, like fourth or fifth best deck maybe. Like when it gets going, it can be hard to stop just because like you have so many different characters you can put on the board that can quest for a lot of lore. But if you find yourself in a situation where your opponent is just outpacing you, um, you can lose like we saw in the second game. Um, but if you're in a situation where you can get John Silver on the board and that just completely um, cuts their game plan, then you can take the win. Like, I don't think that game started off fantastic, um, but we were able to control the board enough and gain enough lore um, throughout the game to a point where we were just ahead of them in the race. So yeah, um, this was the debut episode of um, Deck of the Week. I hope you enjoy it. You're gonna get a new Deck of the Week every Monday to start your week off. So I hope you're looking forward to that. And Illumineers, I'll see you on the next one. Later.